Is Nightmare Before Christmas a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie? Graveyards, Halloween, Ornaments, Christmas, Creepy Crawlies, Halloween, Santa, Christmas, Sweet Treats that look really neat and are really fun to eat, mmm, both? Might as well celebrate both holidays as we take a look at the Nightmare Before Christmas cookbook. The Nightmare Before Christmas, the official cookbook and entertaining guide with recipes by Kim Laidlaw, crafts by Caroline Hall, and texts by Jody Revinson might just be what you need to plan your next party, whether freaky or festive. This book doubles as a cookbook as well as a party planning guide with recipes and tips based on The Nightmare Before Christmas, so you can expect a lot of Halloween Christmas crossovers, which is a really neat idea for a cookbook. The first part of the book is the collection of recipes. There are 50 recipes for dishes that are highly shareable and perfect in a party setting. The recipe is predominantly skewed towards the Halloween theme, but there's a fair amount of Christmas sprinkled on there also. But the recipes that stand out to me are the ones that marry both themes together, like the Christmas tree pizza with spiders or the monster Christmas wreaths. I have to say that the recipes in here look super creative, very whimsical and cute, and most of the dishes would definitely be attention grabbers on a dining table. For recipes that are highly visual like these, it's a shame that some of the recipes don't have photos, but the ones that do look really awesome and captures that playful charm of the movie. Lore-wise, don't expect any of the text to be in-universe or in-character. All of the descriptions and text are pretty simple and mainly comment on what's on the page with minimal callbacks to the movies. For the recipe steps, I thought they were really well written. The ones that I tried were very detailed and easy to follow and they didn't feel like any guesswork was involved. The second part of the cookbook is the party planning stuff. I would estimate that this takes up the last 40% of the book. The party chapter is kind of divided into four different party types. The Halloween party, the Christmas party, the birthday party, and the summer party barbecue party with all four having a nightmare before Christmas twist to them. In these pages, you'll find ideas for invitations, decor, activities, and various arts and crafts. A lot of the ideas look really fun and not at all tacky. There are even some links to online downloadable templates that could be really helpful with the arts and crafts stuff. So with all of these party planning tips, you can celebrate Christmas on Halloween or you can have Halloween on Christmas and in the night you'll wish it never ends you'll wish it never ends. So let's get on with our own party. Let's head on down to Halloween Town. I'm gonna make three Nightmare Before Christmas inspired dishes, one for Jack, one for Sally, and one for Oogie Boogie. Speaking of Oogie Boogie, we'll be making some Oogie Boogie guacamole with ghost and Christmas tree chips. Talk about the perfect mix of Halloween and Christmas. For this, you'll need some corn tortillas, which we'll be cutting into our chips. The cookbook uses ghost and Christmas tree shapes, but you can use whatever other appropriate shapes you'd like. With the cutters I'm using, I was able to make about four chips per tortilla, and I was able to just press them through the whole stack of tortillas from the package. Once they're all cut up, spread them over a parchment paper lined baking sheet and brush the tortillas with some avocado oil or canola oil. Make sure to get both sides and season with some salt. Pop these in the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 to 12 minutes. Let's go make some wok while we wait. The guacamole is super simple. Get three ripe avocados and scoop the flesh in a bowl. Mush them up with a masher or a fork until smooth. Then add in half a cup of cherry tomatoes, three tablespoons of cilantro, the juice of a large lime, and a teaspoon of hot sauce. Add a bit of salt and pepper and mix it all together. Serve them together with the ghost and tree chips and look at that some adorable ghost and tree chips with wok. Super easy and super cute. Now we're going face to face with Jack Skellington himself. We're making Jack Skellington shepherd's pie. For this shepherd's pie, the cookbook suggests to use either lamb shoulder or beef chuck roast. I went with beef just because it's the more economical option. With these in one inch pieces, season them generously with salt and pepper. Then in a Dutch oven, heat up two tablespoons of olive oil on medium high and fry up the meat until brown on all sides. You might have to work in batches to make sure the meat isn't overcrowded so it can brown nicely. Once done, put them on a plate and set aside. In the same Dutch oven, melt four tablespoons of butter and let this melt on medium heat. Then add in one finely chopped yellow onion, three chopped carrots, three stalks of celery, and two cloves of minced garlic. Mix them all together and let them cook for about five minutes until they get tender. Then we're gonna sprinkle in six tablespoons of all-purpose flour and mix that in. 
Next, add in three and one third cup of beef stock and a two third cup of dry red wine with a teaspoon of minced fresh rosemary or thyme leaves. I went with rosemary. Let it come back to a boil, then add back in the meat and cook this covered on medium for about one and a half hours. All right, now let's make the fluffy potato topping. For that, we'll be using three pounds of russet potatoes, peeled and cut into chunks, cover it up with some salted water and bring to a boil on high. Once boiling, reduce the heat to medium and cook these for 20 to 25 minutes until soft. Once done, drain out the water and with the potatoes back in the pan, add in two tablespoons of butter to the potatoes and get to mashing. For a smoother texture, we're also going to be adding a one third cup of warmed heavy cream along with some salt and pepper. When the meat is done, season it with some salt and pepper, add in a cup of fresh or thawed frozen peas and stir it in. Then pour the meat mixture in a greased round baking dish, then spread your mashed potatoes on top. As you can see, mine isn't really in spreadable condition, so I ended up adding some more warmed heavy cream just to get it softer and easier to work with. Then using a spoon, scoop out some eye holes for Jack and use a knife to draw out his mouth and nose. The only thing we gotta do now is pop them in the oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes or until the top is lightly browned. When done, I'm gonna add some carrot pieces as the pupils like the cookbook photo. And that's it for Jack Skellington Shepherd's Pie. Although to be honest, the orange pupils kind of makes it look not like Jack Skellington and more like the moon from Majora's Mask. And you know what? I have no problem with that. Lastly, let's make something for Sally as we make this cake inspired by her iconic patchwork dress. Let's make the Sally patchwork layer cake. Starting with a batter, in a bowl sift in two and three quarter cup of cake flour, a tablespoon of baking powder and a half a teaspoon of salt. Then in a mixer bowl, add in two sticks of room temperature butter and one and a half cups of sugar and mix it all together on medium high speed with a paddle attachment. When fluffy, add in four large whole eggs, one at a time, along with an additional two egg yolks and beat well. Throw in two teaspoons of vanilla extract and continue beating on low speed while you add in half the dry ingredients that you sifted and mix it until just well combined. Then add in a cup of sour cream and the rest of the dry ingredients and mix. We're going to divvy up the batter into three bowls and we're going to color each one with a 1 8 teaspoon of gel food coloring, one pink, one yellow, and one teal. Then butter the bottoms of three 9 inch round cake pans and line them with parchment paper. Once lined, butter the parchment also and dust with some flour. Start spooning in the batter one color after the other until evenly distributed among all three pans. Then smooth the tops out a bit. It's okay if they slightly swirl together. Then bake in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 18 minutes or until an inserted toothpick comes out clean. Once done, cool on a wire rack for 15 minutes, then invert and pop them out and continue to let them cool. While we wait on that, we're going to make some dark chocolate frosting by beating one and a half sticks of room temp unsalted butter on medium speed for about a minute. When fluffy, sift in three cups of powdered sugar and a three quarter cup of Dutch processed cocoa powder. Then add in half a cup of whole milk two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and a 1 8 teaspoon of salt. Mix on low just until combined, then scrape the sides and mix again. Beat on medium high for about two minutes, then transfer a half cup of that into a small piping bag for later. To start building the cake, start with one cake layer. If the top part is domed, slice it off to make it flat. Mine was only a little bit domed, so I'm just giving them a subtle trim. Then spread a layer of chocolate frosting, then the second layer cake with the top flattened, more frosting, for the top layer, you can just flip the cake so that the flat bottom is on top. Cover the top and sides with more chocolate frosting as a crumb coat, then pop it in the fridge for at least an hour or up to one day. While that chills, we can work on the vanilla frosting. Back to the mixer, whisk together a stick of room temperature butter on medium speed for about a minute, sift in two and a half cups of powdered sugar, three tablespoons of whole milk, two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and a pinch of salt. Run it on low speed until just mixed, Scrape down the sides, then beat on medium high for about two minutes until smooth. Then just like the batter, we're going to divide them into three different bowls and again, add in a 1 8 teaspoon of gel coloring in each one, transfer them all to a piping bag and cut a quarter inch hole for the tips. To decorate the cake, draw on some outlines for the different patches all over the cake. Also, some of the patches are going to be dark chocolate that you've set aside. Once the outlines are drawn, go ahead and fill them in with the colors and use a small spatula to try to smooth it. Use the dark chocolate to draw on the stitches and also draw on some swirls on the pink and stripes and dots on the blue. Refrigerate for an hour to firm it up and remove from the fridge 30 minutes before serving. And that's the Sally Patchwork Layer Cake.
Trick or treat, it's time to eat. Let's oogie boogie with these chips. Very tasty. The guac recipe is super simple. Tastes like your average guacamole, which is a pretty good thing. The chips turned out pretty good too, but I think I could have cooked them for a bit longer. Some of them are nice and crispy, but some are still on the doughy side, so I think they could have used a bit more time in the oven. The ghost and tree shapes are super fun though, and it was really easy to just use cookie cutters on a whole stack of tortillas. A very neat idea for a quick and easy app for a party. Let's have a go at Jack Skellington's meat pie face over here. You probably can't see it, but I removed the carrot eyes to make him look more like Jack. Let's get a heaping bite of this and, oh yeah, this is good stuff. I usually see shepherd's pie or cottage pie filled with ground meat, but I like the change to meat chunks here instead. I like biting through the meat and having that creamy potato mash meld with it in my mouth. Loving the deep, rich flavor from the red wine and rosemary, which makes the gravy aromatic and flavorful, but not overpowering. The peas, though, are a bit undercooked in my opinion. I feel like I should have thrown them in with the rest of the veggies rather than later on as the cookbook suggested. They're not a deal breaker, but I do prefer the peas to be softer. But all in all, a very solid pie recipe. Well, we're leaving the pie and moving on to cake. Now I'm a terrible baker and I'm just hoping I didn't completely mess this up. And upon dissection and close inspection, not a bad cross section. My layers aren't as even as the cookbook's photo, but I really like how the colors look. Taste-wise, also pretty solid. Did I actually not completely mangle this cake? The cake is firm, but not too firm. Good cake to icing ratio, but the star of the show is that dark chocolate icing. I've never worked with Dutch processed chocolate before, but now I'm a fan. It tastes so deeply chocolatey, but without being too bitter, and it just tastes so silky smooth. I'm just gonna try Dutch processed chocolate on everything. So is the Nightmare Before Christmas cookbook any good? I think it's great. I love the cute little recipes and the fun hybrid of themes. And even though I'm not much of a party planner, I do appreciate the party tips that are included. Whether you're a fan of the movie or not, I think this cookbook brings a lot of value and I really dig it.